A warm welcome to the stage, Julia Rehme. Yeah, hello. Hello, everyone. Julia, I already said we work together in the product design team. What is your responsibility exactly? Aaron, if you still haven't understood this, despite the fact that we spend day after day sitting right next to each other at the desk, you are difficult to convince. No, I work with the front end topics. Some of you might have seen me in the video about the themes, how, do you, how you put a theme into a plugin and sell it. For example, the developer documentations, that is where I recreated the starting page, for example. Right. And what made you choose this topic for your talk? What do you want to convey? Well, I don't want to give too much away beforehand. Basically, this is about exciting people. Now is the time for you to excite your customers. And this is what I would like to share with you together with, with ideas and suggestions. All right. The floor is yours. Thank you. Right. As I said, this is my first slide already. What will happen after you've chosen your categories, after you've entered information and pictures about products? What happens after you've created your shopping world with all the banners necessary? What happens afterwards? Question mark. That is your time. That is the point in time where you will excite your customers. Your customers, they will see it and they will feel it. And this is why I would like to talk with you and to you about excitement. I will speak about myself as an introduction, share my excitement with you. After that, I will speak about time. And then I will talk about real examples to give you ideas and suggestions. Excitement. What am I excited about? Well, I love fashion, for example. Some of you, especially the female participants, will be able to understand what I mean. When I don't have to work, when my boyfriend goes fishing, I go shopping. I do shop online and offline. I work in a, I, I live in a rather rural area. We have a little uh, lack in shops, so to say, so I have to spend my time online. During the first month at Shopware, I never wore the same outfit twice. Why? Because every night at home, I sit down and I have the time to put together a completely new outfit for the next day. And my colleagues and my partner said, are you really wearing something different every day, day after day? And I said, yes, yes, I am, simply because it's important to me, because I take the time every night to create something new, to put together something new. It was important to me. And at some point, I wanted to go one step further. And I thought, I want to improve. And I said, well, all of the pieces of clothing that I own, I digitized them. And now I use an app. So from anywhere, from the sofa or from anywhere where I have to sit and wait, I can use the app to put together my next outfit, my outfit for the next day. And that is fun. And that is exciting. And I know that my colleagues notice. They notice and they like it. And when I was the head of a fashion brand uh, back then, in the past, there was a particular day when the window was to be redesigned. And I wanted to do it. And I thought it was so much fun. Because at that point in time, it wasn't about selling the pants to a female customer. But I saw an opportunity there. The opportunity to convince the customers who are in front of the shop windows, even after opening hours, to convince them, to excite them about our fashion. And this is why I sometimes spend hours after closing in the shop window on my hands and knees to, to create the best window I could. The skirt had to be perfectly folded, and the t-shirt, the wigs, they had to be adjusted in some cases. I completely changed their hairdo as well. It was 
so important to me that the shop window looked well and that I was able to reach the female customer with the newest fashion. I looked at the shop window from every possible angle and I looked at it again and again. And after opening hours, there was one uh, mannequin that I put behind the doors, the door window, and I put the newest pieces on this. Monica. And the women knew it after a while. They knew when they passed by our shop window on the weekends or at night, they knew that behind the, the doors they would find the newest pieces. And sometimes a customer would approach me during the day and ask me, Julia, there was this T-shirt that the mannequin wore at night. Uh, do you still have it? And I said, yes, of course. So I took the time to do that, and it was appreciated by the customers. They noticed and they appreciated it. And that was when I realized, well, I am working in fashion, which is what I wanted, but actually what I need is to feel what the customer feels and to use that, to utilize that. Just recently, I walked through the city center of Cologne uh, at night when all the shops were closed. And I passed by a shop window. And I, at first, I passed it by. But then I, I, I took a moment. I, I hesitated. And I went back. Because they had this sign in the window, closed because life is so beautiful, it said. And I stood there. And I thought, this is amazing. Wow. Why didn't I think of it? This does not say anything about the fashion. It doesn't tell you anything about the product. And I don't even know whether this shop sold male or female fashion for women or for men, but I learned something about the shop itself. I loved the shop instantly. I thought it was authentic, it was real. And so I took the picture, and I'll remember that forever. I have this picture, and I will always think about this shop. Maybe at some point when I'm in Cologne, next time I'll go and buy something there. Who knows? That is something I remember about the shop. And now I have a very nice example from the day-to-day -day life. Imagine a friend of yours. It's his birthday. How do you congratulate him or her? Do you write an SMS? Do you write a chat message? Do you record a voice message? An email, maybe? Will you call? Or do you go there passing by for a glass of beer anyway every year? I don't know about you, but when it's my birthday, my telephone will never ring. Not once. Now, you might think Ms. Rehm doesn't have any friends, but that's not true. I wouldn't put it that way. And I asked others in, in my environment of friends and family, and they said the same thing. They said, no, nobody hardly ever calls anymore. No, my phone will not ring either on my birthday. And someone says, well, if anybody rings me, it's my grandmother. She does ring me on my birthday. Of course, there are people who say, I don't like to speak on the phone. And my friends say that, and this is why they, don't, uh, they know it, and this is why they don't call me. But that's strange, isn't it? Now, just imagine someone you know, an acquaintance, just an acquaintance uh, that you see every once in a while in a blue moon. They call you on your birthday. I would look at my screen, I would think, all right, and I would say hi, and I would be absolutely surprised that that person is calling me. I would be overjoyed. Yes, I would feel joy, and the person calling will hear that. She or he, he will hear that in my voice, thinking, oh, she's excited that I'm calling. It's a win-win situation, actually. And now one thing is fascinating. How did they get this right? How did they get this spark of excitement in me? How, how did they trigger that? Just by calling, by remembering my birthday, and by taking two minutes of time for me. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? But it would mean if we could convey that feeling of excitement, if we could convey that we've taken some time for somebody to do something, it would mean something. The other person might have congratulated me all the other years as well, but that year it meant something to me. It was human, it was authentic, it was real, and it was very personal. And that brings me to the next factor, time. 
You'll have realized already time is of the essence here. Time plays an essential part. But what can we do in order to spark excitement? Well, there's no generalized answer to that. Because one person is excited by this, the other person ex is excited by that. We are different. We're also different in our excitement. Some people love fashion. Some people love fishing. Some people love cars. What is it that excites us? And sometimes it's just the little things that excite us very much. So despite the fact that we are so different, we have one thing in common, I think. We have the same basic needs. We need love and we need warmth. We want security. Mentally and emotionally, we want to grow to achieve and create our own identity. We want diversion. We want to leave traces in life. We have the same basic needs, all of us. But still, that doesn't answer my question, does it? Now, how does the customer tick, the customer that's about to hit the buy now button? You'll never know, but there are trends in society that can help you answer that question. And so just recently, I looked at the value index that Peter Wippermann and Jens Krüger came up with. They developed this value index and uh, published it for the first time in the year 2000. It shows how many times in which context Internet users in Germany talk about the basic values of our society. The foundation of this analysis are 4 million published statements from communities, blogs, fora, etc., etc., online. In 2018, these were the first three values, nature, health, and family. When I read this, I thought, yes. Yes, I agree, I thought. This is what I feel as well. And then I looked at this topic more closely and I thought, well, these three values, but then there must be a connection between them. There must be something that gives me an opportunity to work with these values. And I came to the following conclusion. It's time. The combining factor is Time, because time is such an important factor in life. When we look at nature, well, we mustn't lose any time anyway. Uh, it's uh, high noon. But when we go on vacation, for example, we spend our leisure time outside in nature. We go to a beach. We go hiking into the woods. We go skiing. So we spend our free time in nature, outdoors, we want to calm down, we want to relax. Regarding health, it's like that. You can only achieve a healthy body if we allow for our body to heal, if we give the body time to heal. And in order to avoid any illnesses or injuries, we have to take preventive measures, do sports, uh, etc. You have to find your own approach, but we need to take time to take care of ourselves and our bodies family now? Well, I don't think I need to say much about that because family is, I think, the best example of how precious time is. You cannot buy time. You cannot turn back time. And these values, they tell us we want to relax. We want to calm down. We want to be human and real. We want to be authentic. We want to arrive somewhere. We want to arrive home. There is the term slow movement that has been coined. And yes, I agree. I fully agree. And I think this is absolutely true. However, you need to take some time to achieve that. During your daily life, you have to accept that you're taking the time to deal with that. So time is precious. Time is something that is appreciated very, very much. And therefore, let me ask you, what can we do to spark excitement in others? Well, let's spend some time for them or with them. So, you need to look more closely at your routines and create something positive 
out of it. Like this birthday call, this specific person could have uh, taken a different means of communication to congratulate me on my birthday, but they took two minutes. He or she took two minutes to call me, and that gave me a, so, such a positive feeling. And your customer is to feel the very same thing. They should feel, your customers should feel that, yes, these people are taking time to think about what I might need right now. And I can feel that, and I can see that. And that brings us to the next factor. Now we know that that's the answer. But what happens now? What will we do? What do we do with this knowledge? Time. Let me give you a few examples. We as, or you as shop owners and shop operators, what can you do? Just imagine you ordered something. Imagine you ordered this bow tie online and you get the parcel. What if this Polaroid was in the parcel? That's cool, isn't it, a Polaroid? You open the package and you didn't expect that. And this Polaroid that is unique, it exists only once. And then it's a personal message to you. How cool is that? I'm pretty sure, and I've seen that in my circle of families and friends, they take pictures of such a thing because they're so excited. And then they post it on any social media platform and they share it. There's hardly any better advertising than that, is there? If a customer does that out of excitement and joy. But what else does it tell you? What's the message it conveys? Well, it's authentic, it's real. The customer has the feeling to get something from you, something personal. They get the feeling that, well, it's not only a product that I can buy, but there are people behind the shop. There are people behind the product. There's something more behind it, and that's this little thank you. That is what they will remember. That is what's authentic, what's real, and what they will remember. And definitely, they will put this up on their fridge with a magnet. You don't throw something like that away. It's a beautiful example of if you want to send something out to the customers. Now, as you know, you might have a warehouse somewhere or a service provider. You don't pack your parcels yourselves. You have a service provider who does that for you, which is OK. But how can you solve this problem in a digitized world? And that is where the keyword details comes in. Take time to care about the details. Because if you are able to convey that you spend some time on your customers, it has more meaning. It is more meaningful. The more love you put into putting together the details, the more you're able to differentiate from the broad mass of shops because that is what people will remember about your shop. One example. This is an example from a shopping world. You get these boxes. You think you can go there with your cursor, click on it. But this example contains so many details that are hidden that you don't even see at this stage or that you wouldn't even expect at this stage yet. But this whole shop is based on details and that is why this is a holistic experience to shop there and I'll show you the video and then you'll see what happens this is my mouse cursor the icon turns the text goes a little bit up and the picture becomes more transparent at that point in time a lot is happening there and you wouldn't expect it at a first glance and uh, you wouldn't think you necessarily need it on a website. And you might be right. But that is why this is so great. It conveys value, a higher value. The text is great. It's short and swift. Uh, the wording is great. You get it instantly. And the anima animation plus the fact that the layer becomes transparent. So all of these are details that make the experience holistic. And next, my next example is signing up for a newsletter. It's an example that I put together myself uh, for this presentation. Usually, the uh, sign-ups for newsletters are all the way down near the footer. But I wanted to make it a bit more, a bit bigger. 
So when you sign up for a newsletter, the customer usually agrees to provide their email address so that you can send them every month, every week, or every hour, as you wish, a newsletter. The customer says, yes, I do want this. I agree. And I think by doing that, the customers de deserve a thank you, don't they? But how can you send them a thank you note? It's difficult in a digital world. So why not create an animation like that? Why not give feedback? Hey, we like that. We like that fact. This button was designed, constructed just to say thank you to you in a nice, playful, beautiful way. And at the end, the customer gets the feedback, yes, it worked, we transmitted your data. That is just a simple button, actually, and the customer wouldn't have expected it. But via this button, people put a lot of thought and time into creating such a nice, little, beautiful button. This is another example, the DMAX shop. It's very much targeting a special group, and it is, of course, a totally different story when you look at the products. However, something it's striking, and something which makes it so different from other shops. The wording, at two points especially. On the button, I want it. And at the top, in the shopping cart, it's not shopping cart, it's loot. So that's cool, isn't it? So it's a very simple, banal change of wording. But when I order the product, I want it. Of course, it's very authentic. I want it. This is on the button. And this is something you enjoy. And this is authentic. And this makes this shop very authentic and fits the target group. And the effect is super. This brings me to the contact form. Everybody knows it. This is the shopware standard contact form with a responsive theme. This is your greenfield. So with this contact form, you have all the possibilities at hand. And then these possibilities are sometimes ignored. But I think there is a wonderful path you, a way uh, on the website of Tofukind. And it's highly topical. And when I saw that, right, this is really cool. So the name is a contact form. So we do want to get in touch. We do want to have contact with the customer. And this is what they write. Speak to us, they, they write in there. Your concern is important for us. And we will invest time for your concern and a heart. And your, yours, TOFO, kids which is the translation of Tofukind. So there are several people behind it. It's not a shop only, but there is a personality behind it. There are real people who work for this shop, that it is successful, and that I can get the product I want. And then next to it, the contact form. Very lean. It's not giving too much information. It's something I like, and I can simply fill it in, and they want me to fill it in, and it's fine. They like it, and they like me to get into contact with them. So just that you can read it, so you can see the heart in it, in the wording. So there are so many details included on this page. The image at the front will always change after each refresh. And this is what makes this website so great, very authentic and very personal. Just imagine another example. This was a video of an online shop. And you're on the start page. And when you play the video like this here, you see a 
an office, people sitting in front of a screen. And they are completely bored, staring at the screen. Suddenly, ping, an order comes in. So what does the person do in front of the screen? Jumps up, hands in the air, and the colleague comes along, throws some confetti. The next colleague goes in the middle of the room and starts dancing. And suddenly, they start a party from one minute to another in the office, and the whole thing then continues. And then another colleague comes into the picture and brings on a silver tray the product. Jointly with confetti, decoration, and everything, they will then wrap it up. And they will go onto the street, dancing, and go to the post office. The video was very cool. And the message behind it was much better, even. It was genius. So they message was on the start page. I haven't even looked at the products. They gave me the message. If you order with us, we will throw a party. We won't do anything the whole day just to wait for you to place an order. And once you've sent off the order, this is the biggest joy we can have to work for you. And that was really awesome for me. This is great. And then I thought to myself, do I have to order now? I do want them to have a party. Why not? But the message which came across was very authentic. It's not only a shop or a storefront. It's people behind it. And this happens often when I do research and look at these kind of shops, I then think, wow, the story is so cool and everything which is coming across, the time they have taken, the effort they put into detail and the wonderful wording of the texts, I might then think, I do want to order there. I don't do want to have this product. I want to share their spirit. I want to be part of their spirit. And if such a concept achieves this and causes this with a customer, then everything was right. And then you did everything completely right. So this is in detail and in a very precise way what you can do. Take time, take your time to enthuse, to excite people to take your time to invest more in detail. Short wordings with a lot of effect. Do bring your personality across. Who is behind the storefront? Who is in your team? And thus, I think you can generate more excitement. And what is even more important, you can share excitement. As in the example that the picture is taken and you will feel the excitement of your business. And this is what I wanted to bring across today in my talk. Take time, take your time. The customer will see it, the customer will feel it. Excitement is something you can share as you can see on this picture. If a child, when a child has an ice cream in his hands and is so excited, you will all share it. So do take care of the details. Always look out for the opportunity to excite people. Thank you very much for listening. I've seen that I'm running a bit late. Thank you very much for listening. Aaron will now come on stage, and we will, of course, have any questions now and give you the answers. Thank you very much. Julia. Thank you for your talk. And my first question to you. Yes, go ahead. Time is very precious, and some of the shop Operators will say, I'm in a B2B business, and you sell screws or bowls or very unemotional things, not food. 
and they say time is money. So why should I invest time and money in these little things? I'm only working in B2B. But here as well, the customer will first of all go through a search engine and key in a word. And when you see a variety of shops, you will decide for one sh to go for one shop. First of all, you have to feel drawn to the shop. And you, of course, look for a product. But if a user is looking again, what will they remember from the search? Not the huge product range, but image is more important than text and people will remember other things. And with these little details, you will achieve more. If you take this time, you will invest in the long run. You, the customer will always find the shop when you see it and will, of course, save it and come back. Yes, of course, this is what you can achieve. In B2B business, you've got human beings, people, shopping. It's people. It's not a computer shopping. And they will remember the details. They will see, yes, I've placed an order there once before. And this is then, for example, if you haven't saved the website and you have forgotten about that, the excitement you have had, you're always fond to remember nice feelings. So you know the same feeling when you've got a good customer service, you've got the feeling you're well looked after. So also during the purchasing process, you should convey this message. You haven't got the direct customer contact there. Any further questions from the audience, please? So he will then come with a microphone. Hello, Julia. How are you? I had to get used to the microphone. I've got a question with two problems I've got. First of all, things people are used to and trust. What I mean with people get too used to, so we go to Amazon, it's fast and it's uncomplicated, it's easy, and then that's it. So what do we do with all the excitement? So what about the heart and so on? So what I mean when I talk about trust, when I've got such a contact form, I'm in favor. And I'm also an emotional shopper, but we are in Germany. It's, it's a different world, maybe a bit gr more gray. Maybe do they take me seriously? And I've got a concrete question, and I see then suddenly these images. I know what you want, what you say. So we always go f on the safe side not to be striking. It could be something like people haven't got the feeling that this is not of high quality, that you're not taken seriously. When you look at the startup companies and their shops, what is happening there, they really do a lot. And where you say, wow, that's really awesome. So why do they do it? They do it differently. They actually have got the courage to do things differently. We need courage. You simply have to say, no, I do it like this, my way. And this is the courage I show. And when you show this courage, you have done things differently than the others. And this is something pe people will remember. The others will do like anybody. This is the mass of shops. But if you're courageous enough to do it differently, I will take the image of a heart. That was there, and that will be something which is remembered. That's how I see it. And this is the way to do it. How do you want to differentiate yourself from the mass of other people? It's by having these small details to be courageous, to simply do it. Thank you. Further questions? No further questions? There is another one. Marcos is my name. We are now in B2B business. 
our company, the company I work for. So how do you try to convey emotions um, in, on such a website? This was B2C you spoke about. You can do it in the B2B business, but I think there is a different kind of basic need to show emotions. It's diffi more difficult to convey emotions. And that is the very question I wanted to look at. Of course, it's difficult, but also you've got to do with customers, human beings. And according to statistics and evaluations, you will have a target group in the B2B group. It's a group of people who in this industry will then place orders. And there are ways to also reach this target group, maybe in a different way you will be able to have a solution for that. Such a contact form, it's not about um, having nice images in there, a heart, for example, but to put in more intuitive things, not to ask too much to make processes slower or faster, so to have a fast contact. Maybe we can then optimize the processes a bit more and say, we are here for you at this point in time. We thought about how you can work better and faster by ordering with us. That would be an interesting approach to give the message to the customer, we optimize this process for you because we know you have to use it on a daily basis and to order with us. This is the direction you could think of. Next question. Christoph is my name. The contact form to come back to that was really great. I liked it because the emotion killer was not in there. The data protection rule. And just as some food for thought for you here in our room, in the room, maybe you can actually have a different um, contact form, talking about the newsletter and the contact form as such. On the 25th of May onward, you will then have to, first of all, ticket. So you prepare yourself for that. And this is what I also looked at in, the, in my presentation. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Nobody else? No further questions? Then I can only say enjoy lunch. Outside in the food park, there is a lot of delicious foods. So you've got a time advantage.